I'll let that phone finish. <clears throat> That's beautiful music, though. Okay, so synchronous is when things exist or occur at the same time, right? So if you try to look up what asynchronous programming is, uh, if you go to Wikipedia, first thing it does is redirect you to parallel computing, which is a form of computation in which many calculations are carried out simultaneously, operating on the principle that large problems can often be divided into smaller ones, which are then solved concurrently or in parallel, which sounds like synchronous. Then if you go to codewalla.net, here's another one that's a little bit better. Asynchronous operation uh, is processes uh, that operate independently of each other so that they can be handled using different processes or threads without waiting to complete the other ones. So again, we're talking about things happening at the same time. So our simple definition of asynchronous programming is going to be when the flow of your program is such that code might be executed out of order or you might not be able to count on one thing happening before another thing. So we'll get to why these definitions for asynchronous programming seem so totally backwards uh, in a little bit. But right now, let's, let's just focus on this idea that Asynchronous programming is when you can't count on one thing uh, to finish executing before another thing, right? Talk about this thing uh, called a thread and how it works. So JavaScript has traditionally been a single threaded language. And essentially what that means is it just sort of goes down the line one by one and ex executes its commands one at a time. Does this one finishes, does the, does the next one finishes, right? So, so now, Let's talk about what happens when we start to go asynchronous with that thread. So here we have a function, and I've called it last. And what it does, we're using JavaScript's console.log here. So that just puts a string into your console, right? And it's going to log this line from LA to Tokyo, from Iggy Azalea's fancy. Um, and then we're going to define our second function called doProgram. And the first thing it does is it passes that other function we just wrote to JavaScript's set timeout. Is anybody in here not familiar with set timeout? OK, great. So set timeout is going to execute your function after some delay, right? But in this case, we've set it to have absolutely zero delay. And then after that, we're going to console.log these other ones. I'm so fancy, you already know I'm in the fast lane. So when that actually runs, what happens is from LA to Tokyo runs last. Even though we put set timeout first and set it to not delay, zero delay, no milliseconds yet it still runs after all the other three. And this is what we're going to talk about a lot tonight. This is the asynchrony that you can get into with JavaScript, the very beginnings of it. So why does this happen? And it happens because of JavaScript's queue. So I understand that some of this may be hard to see, especially from the back. So I'll explain. Uh, the blue stuff is stuff JavaScript does that you don't see. And the yellow, the yellow stuff is your actual program that you've written out. So when we begin, JavaScript is going to evaluate our code, and it's going to take all of its to-do items, so to speak, and it's going to throw them into the queue. This is a, sort of oversimplified, by the way, but it's a, it's a good representation. Okay, so it takes all of its to-do items, which right now is only one thing. It's a function call to do program. It's going to put it up in the queue. And then JavaScript's going to say to itself, I don't have anything to do, so I'm going to look in the queue and see what's there, and then I'm going to execute what's in the queue. So it makes a call to do program. The very first thing that happens in there is it calls set timeout. So remember, set timeout is designed to allow you to apply a delay to some action, right? But once that delay has finished, JavaScript has to make a decision about when it should actually execute that function that you passed it, right? And the way JavaScript makes these decisions is anything you pass to set timeout, regardless of what your delay is, it's going to go into that queue after the delay. So it's just going to sit here and wait. Then we do our other three lines, our other three console logs, at which point JavaScript runs out of things to do, and it checks the queue again. And it pulls last out of there, and it logs it. So this is JavaScript's rule. When there's nothing to do, check the queue, but only check the queue. <clears throat> only check the queue when there's nothing left to do. So in other words, the current flow is never going to be interrupted by code that exists in the queue. The queue matters because anytime your program receives input, JavaScript has to put that into the queue. So when we talk about asynchronous JavaScript, all we're really talking about is code that puts things into the queue. And if we can't know when code will enter the queue, for example, anytime your application gets any kind of input, then we can't know exactly when it's going to be executed. So what are some ways applications can receive input? 
We just talked about DOM events like clicks. There's hovers, key ups, that sort of stuff where the handlers go in the queue. HTTP or WebSocket communication events. That includes anything that says AJAX in it from any library. Those handlers are going to go into the queue. Uh, web worker message passing. If you're not familiar with web workers, we're going to talk about them a little bit. That's how we do multiple threads in the browser. And those handlers go in the queue as well. And if it's in the queue, and this is where people start to get uh, screwed up. If you, uh, if you spend much time reading through questions on Stack Overflow in regard to these kinds of topics, you'll find uh, a lot of people getting hung up on a couple of things that we're about to run through. The point is, if it's in the queue, you can't return it or traditionally error handle it. The point being, if you're going to deal with asynchronous code, you can't think of it in the same sense as I'm going to do this thing, then this thing, then this thing, right? You can't assign it to a variable like that. You can't return it. You can't try catch it. You've got to use different ways to think of it. And asynchrony can be hard to reason about when it gets complex. So let's talk about some common techniques that make it feel more synchronous. And the two most common things that you'll see all over the JavaScript world are callback functions and promise objects. So what is a promise? A promise is an object with methods that are usually named done, then, and fail. Each method takes at least one callback function, and the callbacks are executed under different conditions. For example, done and then are executed on success, and fail is executed on error. Each promise returns another promise so that you can chain asynchronous functions to, get, uh, to each other, and so that you can attach as many callbacks as you want to any given success or failure event. You can say, my promise equals an invocation of our asynchronous function, and then we can say, uh, my promise dot done and hand it a success handler, and then we can call that again, my promise dot done and hand it another success handler, and you can do that as much as you want. So whereas uh, met functions that work with callbacks typically only allow you one handler, right? This will give you as many as you want. And we can do the same thing with fail. But what's much, much cooler than that is this, this dot then, which allows you to say, my promise dot then, and notice that we call our same asynchronous function again, and then when it's done, call our same asynchronous function again, and then when it's done, call our same asynchronous function again. So this is why I really like the promise object. The general idea is, first of all, you have to, these handlers that you pass to dot then have to return promises themselves, first of all. Uh, and then dot then itself returns a promise, and these things hook into each other so that when something finishes, it can kind of bubble up the promise chain. Does that make sense? That's like the easiest way I can explain it. <clears throat> Just trust me, though, it works. <laughs> so at this point, you may, be, you may be wondering what asynchrony, why asynchrony is always talked about in terms of concurrency when the word seems to imply the exact opposite, what asynchronous JavaScript looks like using web workers, or when this talk is going to end. And at this point, past John reminded me to check the time. OK, we've got a few minutes. <clears throat> so concurrency becomes asynchrony when parallel threads talk to each other, right? So imagine uh, a situation where you have a computer with multiple cores, right? Why do we want computers with multiple cores when things are only just happening one after the other anyways? It's because when you have multiple cores, you can actually s separate concerns between cores and have each one operating at the same time as the other, and the computer is actually doing more than one thing at a time. Uh, so there are ways you can do this really, really easy in lots of languages, and then there are also ways you can do it in JavaScript. <laughs> but what you can do is you can take one program, and you can have it split off into another thread, right? So another timeline of to-do items, and they're both running at the same time, and they're both executing code as part of the same program, and they can pass messages back to each other. So you can do more than one thing at a time, right? So we're talking about JavaScript threads here. And we're going to say up there at the top, uh, the program gets evaluated, and we split off into two threads. Here's our main thread on the left, and here's our extra worker thread on the right. The thing to remember is, because it's a JavaScript thread, each one has a queue, right? So whenever one talks to the other one, it sends its message, and it goes into the other one's queue. And that's where the uh, asynchrony comes in as far as our original definition that we talked about, where uh, you can't count on things to happen like in the order that you wrote them because you don't know exactly when the event's going to occur. Right? So the asynchrony is more within the context of an individual thread and less about the fact that there are two things happening at the same time. At least that's how I wrap my head around it. So like I said, every time a message is sent, that message goes into a queue, and that makes the code within each thread independently asynchronous. So what's a web worker? 
I uh, mentioned this a couple times. This is the way that we spin up multiple threads in browser-based JavaScript. Again, that means that's how we utilize multiple cores on the computer. That's how we tell it to do, actually do different things at the same time. Theoretically, this is an extremely helpful tool that's been much needed for quite some time, and in reality, it's a fairly annoying and cumbersome impl implementation of a concept that ought to have been much simpler. 